The 40th anniversary edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator will contain perhaps the most anticipated content for the past two years. And recently, Microsoft have said these things were high on their priority list for editions in 2022. Of course, I'm talking about helicopters, gliders, and a study level airliner. Now, all of this was announced last week at the Microsoft and Bethesda showcase. However, Jörg Newman, head of Microsoft Flight Simulator, recently went into quite some detail in an interview with SIMA website FS Elite. So, in this video, I want to discuss that interview and pick out a few highlights. As always, if you want to check out the full interview, and I highly recommend that you do, you can find it linked in the video description. So, the big focus for the 40th anniversary is celebrating close to half a century of the Flight Simulator franchise, the Microsoft Flight Simulator franchise. Few pieces of software can claim to have that type of heritage. Naturally, Microsoft wanted to make a big deal out of this, and understandably so. Hence, a whole load of new planes are on the way. Now, headlining this is the Airbus A310, and as hinted at already, this is going to be a fully simulated airliner, a so-called study-level plane. Now, Jörg Newman feels that a fully studied, uh, fully simulated airliner is a really big deal. Now, this will probably raise a few eyebrows, because surely flight simulators should have had simulated airliners all along. After all, it's been two years now since the sim released. But Jörg admits that Microsoft didn't initially take Microsoft Flight Simulator into the fully simulated airliner territory, and they avoided doing this intentionally. That said, of course, some third-party airplanes have been out there that are fully simulated and they've arrived fairly recently, as well as over the preceding years. But as for Microsoft themselves, well, it's unclear why they chose to go in this direction. But they seem to be suggesting that they felt the audience wouldn't really want that level of simulation within the game. At least that's my interpretation reading between the lines. However, over the past years, it's become very apparent that is exactly what people want. So Jörg stated this was their biggest mountain to climb. It required a lot of work to implement. So Microsoft went out there and approached developers AnyBuilds about this. AnyBuilds have long experience with developing highly realistic simulated planes. They also have a great reputation within the industry. So Microsoft agreed with AnyBuilds that their A310 should be made available for free in the upcoming 40th anniversary edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Naturally, Jörg didn't go into the contractual details about this, but Microsoft no doubt would have paid or will be paying any builds a not small amount of money for this. Either way, the end result is that now all simmers will get access to a top simulated airliner for a flight simulator, and this will be available on all platforms for completely free for everyone who owns the sim already. Keep in mind that these types of planes can generally cost anywhere from $70 to around $150, so this is a very big deal indeed. So the story is very similar with another plane coming in the 40th anniversary. This is the Douglas DC-3. This is another premium third-party plane that Microsoft have come to an agreement with on the, with, with the developer. In this case, Aeroplane Haven. The DC-3 will also be made available for free of charge to all simmers. Currently, Aeroplane Haven charge around $30 for their planes, so this is also a very nice addition. Now, anyone who has played the uh, previous versions of Flight Simulator will be well aware that the DC-3 has a rich history with the series, so it's very fitting to see this plane return for the 40th anniversary. There's another plane on the way as well, this is called the Spirit of St. Louis. Microsoft have spent some time with the Smithsonian to get this one into the sim, and they revealed a nice interesting piece of information about this. Initially, the Spirit of St. Louis should have been released alongside E3, now that would make, uh, mean it would release this month, E3 should have been around about June, I do believe usually, however E3 isn't happening this year, and it appears that Microsoft therefore changed their minds anyway, and thought it would be better to include in the November release. We also know that the DHC-2 Beaver is on the way as well. Anyway, planes aside, the really big news for me is the introduction of helicopters. It appears that two helicopters will be introduced initially, you can see both of these listed on the screen right here. So helicopters, as many of you will probably be well aware, have required a lot of work to get them into the sim. In short, fluid dynamics were not capable of supporting helicopters, so Asobo have been rewriting the code for fluid dynamics for a really long time now, and this 
will allow the sim to support helicopters. It's been added in over the previous updates, a little bit here, a little bit there, various components of it, but the final implementation should come alongside the helicopters with November. Now, on another subject, we've got gliders. And gliders, of course, require thermals. Thermals, surprisingly enough, are not currently in the sim. So my take initially on this originally was that thermals were not fully simulated, but were in partially. But Jörg Newman states that, well, no, that's not the case. Thermals don't exist in the sim whatsoever. Anyway, thermals are actually a complex thing. They need to account for terrain, the position of the sun, how much moisture is in the environment, current wind conditions, and much more. So once you have all of these accurately simulated, well, then you can simulate the thermals. So all of this is on the way into the sim as well, allowing for gliders to uh, well, finally make it. Now, Microsoft didn't state how many gliders are going to be uh, released initially. I'll take it for now, maybe just one, but hopefully they'll go a little bit further and introduce at least two, but time will tell on that one. Now, another very interesting piece of information here. FSLE asked Jorg Newman about the Space Shuttle, and that question came up because, well, that Microsoft have been working with the Smithsonian on the Spirit of St. Louis. It turns out that the Smithsonian does have scans of the Space Shuttle. These scans took three years to make, so they're very detailed and very complex scans. Whether or not they would ever be made available for Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to be somewhat of an open question, and an unanswered one for the moment at least on that, but it's certainly not a definite no, and maybe then, for some point in the future. Either way, if it was to happen, it would be a huge amount of work. York was very clear that they wouldn't just want an arcade implementation here, and it would need to be a full-on simulation for the shuttle. So this kind of touches on recent introductions of the Halo Pelican. York said that, well, he was a little nervous about doing this, about bringing in a fictional ship. And that makes sense, right? After all, Microsoft Flight Simulator is generally a very serious piece of software. So yeah, he kind of felt that introducing fictional ships could kind of take the sim into crazy territory. So Microsoft going forward want to be very restrained about all of this and not take things too far. Moving on to the World Update 10. A lot of people were wondering why Microsoft returned back to the US again. And I admit, this one also surprised me. Turns out that the reason is Microsoft had obtained a huge amount of terrain data for the United States between release and now. In fact, they had 42 new sources of data with huge improvements. So that is one of the main factors they decided to return back to the US. And likely, at least based on what Microsoft have been saying here, that they've probably returned to other countries again as new data and new information actually appears. So just basically keep ongoing improvements with the sim. A nice touch there. Don't think anyone would really want to dismiss that idea. Now, on a broader note, Microsoft have moved updates from every uh, month. We've been seeing monthly updates ever since Microsoft Flight Simulator released, uh, to now being at once every six weeks. This will allow them a whole month to test the updates. The idea is that this will help avoid a lot of the recent problems that we've been seeing specifically with sim updates. So hopefully this extra time pays off. A little bit of a shame to see a few less updates each year, but you know, if it improves quality and improves stability, then I for one am all for that. Anyway, if you want to see the full interview there, I've only touched on well, just a portion of the interview. There's a whole load there, and York Newman is always a great guy to hear from. And so yeah, do check the link in the video description for that full interview. Well worth a read. There's a load of other information in there as well. Also, do let me know your thoughts and feelings on what we've seen so far about the 40th anniversary edition in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to helicopters and gliders? Are you looking forward to trying out a simulated airliner, or have you already tried one, perhaps? Do let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'd love to hear from you. At any rate, that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.